So we've got like two minutes. Um, figure we'll give everybody the last two minutes to get on, and then Veronica and I'll start chatting with you. Obviously, we're both in our home offices. Yep. If you have any questions, I can see them. If you want to, um, not in the chat, but the questions, I'm not sure how it looks on your side. You can send me a question and we'll answer them as they come in. Yep, I'm gonna let Veronica pretty much interrupt me at will. Um, when she has a question, I can kind of tell by her face. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, she and I can see each other, but I can't see the questions, only she can. So she's gonna read them and, and we'll address them. Good As morning. They, we have a good morning. Uh, there's another, of course, another Veronica. <laughs> we've got, oh, look, so far we've got like 33 people. That's cool. So we're yeah. this one just, seeing, oh, which you probably already know, this one's going to be focused just on taking a listing. So many times when we, most of the times when we've always done this, we just do the overall and we are going to be doing the overall next week. But we broke out one for today is just for taking a listing and one the one for um, Friday is just for um, writing a, an offer. So we're gonna break it up a little bit. Almost 40 now. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I'm, I'm kind of bummed because I was really enjoying my cool mornings and my cool mornings are no more. <laughs> All right, it's 1045. Good morning, everybody. I am Susan Herbert, uh, managing broker, and we have also Miss Veronica. Hi. Hi there. Veronica is our office manager for uh, Arrowhead Extraordinaire, and she's also <laughs> super savvy at Transaction Desk. Um, I don't know why she finds it so much reading, but I know she takes the time to really dig into it and study out some really cool things. So today we're going to um, approach this just from the angle of taking a listing. So, um, cause usually when we do this, we just do uh, purchase contracts. So we're going to pretend we're taking a listing. Um, the first thing, so this isn't gonna be really geared towards somebody who's just getting into transaction desk. I just wanna give you that caveat. If you've not done it at all, um, you might wanna try our class next week. Certainly stay on board and everything, but we're gonna kind of we're assuming that you kind of already know your way around this a little bit. We're just going to give you some fine tuning points. So I want to start off with templates. Um, if you're familiar with zip forms, that was probably a big part of your life. So I want to show you where to find them. Um, they're buried a little bit here, um, a little bit more obvious than, than they used to, but they're in the gears on your far left, the setup gears. If you click on that to your far left, And they're right about dead center, right a little bit toward the bottom here, transaction templates. So going in here and doing it this way would if would be if you're going to, I always like to use the word organically set up a template. You can set up a template if you're already doing something. So if you're already working on a listing, um, you'd opened a transaction and you're you're working on something, you can start a template backwards, um, you know, from where you're at there. But we're gonna start one from scratch if you will right Is that cool veronica yep okay cool so go ahead and open your transaction templates now i have been messing around so i have a bunch of them you may have nothing in here and that's fine um and as you know about templates they're shell transactions that already have the documents and the forms in there that you're going to use regularly um one of the th examples I, I used last time was, let's say you live in a very large condominium complex. And you not only live there, you market heavily and do a lot of business. I know a lot of agents that do that. Um, so you may have a template just for that particular um, complex. Um, if you do a lot of work in a particular subdivision, you know, in a, in a particular spot in Sun City or a particular spot in Arrowhead or on the east side, you know, wherever that is, um, you may have specific documents ready just for that. So we are going to create, we're going to make a pretend um, because 
I can't think of one out. Let me see. Hey, Veronica, where do you live? Do you live somewhere that's in a complex with an HOA? Yeah, it's um, it's a small place, but yeah. Do you want to use mine? Okay, I was just trying to think. Of, I'm just going to make something up because we can. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna. So we're gonna live. We're gonna live in um the ABC condos. So it's oh, a big it. complex. It was built in the fifties, and um. I don't know. It's somewhere, somewhere on the east side of the valley. It doesn't really matter where, but it's a very large complex. I live there, and I market heavily and do a lot of business in ABC condos. So my new trend, I got to move stuff here. Just bear with me one sec. Okay. So just like everything else in Transaction Desk, the add button, right? Yeah. We're gonna add. We're gonna make. Sorry, I got to move around a face over. We're gonna make a new a new template, and we're gonna name it. ABC condos. You copy me or make up your own. So this is for all the all the listings I'm going to take in ABC condos. And this is obviously going to be residential listing. Description. You can do that if you really want to. I, I think that's cumbersome myself. All right, so I just created a blank empty shell template. Um, I am going to start adding things. Do you want to talk a little bit about checklists, Veronica? Is that because we were talking about that before? You've got some really good ideas for those. Yeah, so on a listing, if you are really good with marketing, you can do all kinds of add this into, okay, I'm going to call the sign up, I'm going to put the lockbox on and add these as your tasks. So you know, oh yeah, I still haven't done that. Oh, I'm gonna send that marketing email out or I'm gonna, so whatever you do for your marketing, you can actually create in checklists. So maybe since this is a particular farming or a listing and you're doing these condos, you have something very specific you do for marketing purposes for this condo. So you might say, okay, I'm gonna go post, uh, do a checklist and say, uh, I'm, put on my calendar the HOA meeting. So you're there and announce that you have something for sale, or maybe you go put it in the community mailbox area or whatever. So you can add those things in here. Um, and if you do a bunch of checklists, you don't wanna get so crazy in here, but they're more reminders for you to do. And then they'll pop up of on your calendar of tasks on a daily, oh, do this, do this, do this. So if you have um, 10 listings, Oh, I need to order a lockbox on this one, do a flyer on this one, put the sign up on this one. It'll keep you in check on and organized on your listings. Right. And checklists, if you'll notice when I'm I scroll or I roll over the plus sign, have their, their own templates. So that's like a template within a template. So you would have you can create checklist templates for all the different types of listings, contracts, or business that you do, whether you maybe you take, maybe you do vacation rentals or or whatever, you can have different to-do lists, checklist templates that you would import into your, into this ABC condos template. And that's what you can do. And you could create it here, or you could have created it earlier. Like Veronica said, you have a whole list of checklists and in the checklist is all your little tasks. And that's a do I, feature, go ahead. I now have up on my screen. Do you want me to share my screen? What my checklist looks like for a listing? Yeah, and this is more a generic. So let's flip. Yep. Where are you at? Sharing. I'm gonna flip you over. Okay. So you can see what it looks like. Okay. So can you guys see my screen? <laughs> um, I can. I can. I'm assuming they can. Yes. Okay. So now you can see on my checklist here. Let me move this over. Um, I have scheduled photos and I actually put five days before list, schedule sign and post three days before list, create incomplete listing, install lockbox. So you can really get specific on your listing side. And even at the after list date, email with marketing update 14, to ap 14 days after, you can order a home book, you can create flyer, door hangers. There's so much you can do on the list side um, and you could even have this of, you know, after close, you could put something like 
uh, follow up and put in your database for now getting uh, a monthly postcard or, or however. Um, so that's in checklists and I have, I'll just bounce back in there, checklist manager, you'll see that okay. if you didn't have any in here, it would be add and you would have them. And if I was in my transaction template, which you're about to be creating with Susan here, I'm going to, it's thinking. <laughs> um, in here, let me go, I think in this one, I could add and go find my listing one, see? Right, she's has, already got them created. Oh. Yes, so I'm just showing, so there's an empty, and you would go there and then pick the one when you created it. And then you could add it. So a great way to come up with these little things, little tasks to do is um, you can use some things in that critical date list. Um, I used to always say when I taught transaction desk, I'm gonna shrink us down here, um, that I didn't think that this software would work really well for organizing um, for being your business running software. And you know, if you really want to dig into it, it could work. Veronica, I can't shrink you. Why am I going crazy here? All right. In the, in the middle, you can oh. um, scroll up. In the middle, towards the bottom of our pictures, there's a little ah, right in the center. And see. you can scoot it up where we're little. <laughs> cool. Cool. So, you know, if you if you do what the way Veronica just kind of described to you. And it, it's kind of, I don't know if you guys have ever used top producer or some of the more complex or in-depth, um, you know, transaction management softwares, softwares. This is a lot like that. Um, it, once you set it up once, you're good to go. It takes a little doing, but you actually could run all your deals through here. And you could set it up right, use it as your, um, CRM as well by the next step. So we just talked about the, the, the checklist, the contacts. Okay, if you had all your contacts, whether it be from Google or from whatever database you use now, um, Wise Agent, whatever, in here, if you'd already imported them into your address book, which is that little, where is it? Where's the darn Rolodex? Oh, the little Rolodex card. <laughs> There it is, little road. You could technically use this software to, to do all your follow-ups and things by integrating the checklist in with it and the calendar. I haven't dived, dove, I haven't dove, dove, dive, dive, dive too deeply <laughs> into that, but it's, it is doable. So you wouldn't necessarily put contacts in a transaction template. But you might, if you had an investor you worked with often, or um, a family you worked with often, or just a, or an LLC that did a lot of business with, you could add them in here and make them their own template. Uh, now, in my context, I'm trying to think, I don't think there would be a contact in what I'm setting up here because I'm working with a particular condo complex. Maybe I could go ahead. I was going to say, if you had an investor and they're, they have a certain LLC and it's a long, crazy name, you might want to put them in here at this moment if you're going to, you know, sell 20 listings of theirs all the time. Yep. Yep. And, or here's another suggestion. Um, and you could put the name of the HOA contact in here. Now, there wouldn't be any documents for them to sign, but it would be really nice to have them linked to this transaction template because then every time I took a listing in ABC condo, I would have her contact, her contact information in this transaction. Just because nobody's gonna sign anything or go on any paperwork, doesn't mean you wouldn't want that individual company or whatever in this template. It brings them into it so that they're their contact information and all that is right there. And that's another way to look at it. Um, obviously, when you hit the plus sign on the contacts, you can do create a new one organically, 
create an empty contact not sure what that would mean other than a new one or add an existing contact that you've already got listed prior over here in this one we're not going to do that documents and folders good time to remember that one little kicker that transaction desk thinks and believes and acts like documents are separate than forms and that's real important again to remember that documents and folders documents are outside documents that you bring in to transaction desk and forms are forms that are already inside transaction desk provided by AAR, um, Armless, some of your local associations. Those are the ones that transaction desk can read as PDFs. Those are in your form library and are all fillable. The documents are the things you bring from the outside, such as the HOA documents. Um, anything imported from the MLS, pool disclosures. Help me, Veronica. What are other some other documents from the outside you would bring in? Well, so for listing, you could have in here something that maybe your broker requires on every listing. You could go ahead and have it in here on your template already. Um, so maybe it's a, a form that's not in AAR. It's not. It's not a state form. Um, maybe you have a certain form that you have all your clients sign that you've created. So anything that you've created that yep. is not an AAR exactly. form. So there's just a plethora of different ones. Just remember that these are ones that Transaction Desk sort of treats as an outsider. It'll become, it just isn't going to be able to, when you do e-sign and things like that, it can't, it can't autofill it. Make sense? Yeah. No questions yet? Yeah. There was someone who was asking, um, it's a West USA agent, about A forms in here. And he said, would this be an area for an A form? Possibly. Um, our A100 um, is typically used on a contract. And right now we're doing listings. So right. um, it might be like the A106, where that's a disclosure one. You could have that in here, sure. Yep, absolutely. Um, anything that you think you're going to be dealing with as you move along so absolutely you're, you're a whatever it is a 100 would work for sure um that's an internal document you never have anybody else working on it other than yourself because you don't send that out to clients or anything like that but absolutely and mm -hmm. then forms which is best with yes ma'am you have a question no sorry Sorry. So forms is is the big is the big one. And the forms hitting the plus sign brings us to our library of forms. So you're all going to see the Arizona Association of Realtors. You're all going to see Arizona Regional Multiple Listing Service. Beneath that, you're only going to see forms or your or library if your local association provides forms to transaction desk. So I'm a member of WeServe, which is also the Southeast. The, we merged with them as well. So for me, I've got the Southeast Association's library. I've got WeServe's library, and that's all. You may see if, if SAR, I don't actually know, if Scottsdale puts some uh, forms in there or Phoenix does, you would see those libraries. But you're all gonna see these two, unless of course, you happen to be outside of the ARMLS service area. So if you're up in Northern Arizona or, or different areas that have different MLSs and you're not a member of ARMLS, you would not see this one. Today, the only one we're gonna really be dealing with is this one because we're gonna take a listing. And so when you're, when you're looking for a form to take a listing or ever, you can hunt and peck which is okay by doing that and you can look for the one you want or you can use the search button, which is my thing. I, I'm, a, I'm a search button girl. So we're going to look for, um, we're gonna list a condo. Uh, so I want, all I gotta do is type, start typing it and I'm gonna get everything that has exclusive. Now we know we want an ER. See, so I got exclusive right, exclusive blah, 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 blah. So we're going to um, do this guy here. We're gonna add the exclusive right to sell. 
So we know we are, I told you that the ABC complex is, um, was built in the 1950s. So we're gonna need lead-based paint for sales. See, they're going in the basket right here. Exciting. Uh, we're gonna need a spud seller. Oh, here's something cool. If you just do spuds, it actually pulls it up. <laughs> didn't you remember? Didn't we try that once and it didn't? Yeah, it. They have updated their um, the titles. So Sorry. I think if you put like Binzer, it used to only come up on a commercial Binzer and not a uh -huh. residential Binzer. And so there's different names. So if you can't find it. Just type in something else that's related, like agency, or it's actually real right. estate disclosure. You know, so you're going to have to, or go through the list. It's in there. I promise you, it's yeah, in you there. Can, you, can, <laughs> you can totally go down the list as too. Just like in zip forms, when you, well, I think it's search too, but you know, it'll it'll give you the whole list of everything. Look, all I did was type in HOA, and it gave me the HOA document. I'm going to need to have my seller fill out. Here's another one I want to see if it does. Let's see if it does R E A D E. Oops. Okay, real estate agency disclosure and election. <laughs> this is curious. Yeah, yeah so, it, so you have to kind of play with it. Um, I actually think this is easier to navigate through. In zip forms, it didn't show you all the libraries. So someone might be stuck in the listing or the, mm -hmm. the, the AAR, you know, one library and not the listing library in zip forms. And they're like, no, it's not in there. I'm like, it's in there. <laughs> so this is easier with that search button to be able to type and it and it's, looking at all of the folders, not just one. Yeah, it'll look, when you're searching up here, no matter what, whether you just have one folder open or not, or you, it will always search all of your available folders. Um, so obviously this is where our listing, uh, we got that from, and let's see, is there anything else in our AAR? Oh, I forgot how many, what I've chosen already. Let's look at the basket. And there and you'll Holly see what you've already picked. So Holly agrees. She said, oh. exactly. It's much easier to find forms. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You could start type any word, whether it's mm -hmm. disclosure, essential statement in that um, search. So if you only know one word in the title, it's still going to come up. So that's really handy. Um, if you, let's see, I'm trying to think of anything. Do the COVID. Put in COVID. Oh, maybe. yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Let's see, it, well, there it is. There it is. There it is. So they don't have a COVID addendum to a listing, do they? No, I don't think. I think there's the. Um, oh, what about that showing one? Is that in here? I think that. I don't know if that's this one. I don't uh, think it is. Let's let me see. So this is the one I believe. Uh, yeah, that one is the uh, just the addendum me. to the contract. Yeah, yeah. I don't see this show. Um, I don't believe that's in here. Oh, I think it should be. I'm gonna go in there and see if I can find it. Yeah, look for that. See if it's in there. Um, okay. Literally, oh, there's the addendum. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So we have got our five forms we're gonna take for this listing. Exciting. And before they're actually in this template, we have to hit the add button. So they're in the basket, we gotta hit the add button. So now every time that I want to take a listing in ABC condos, I've got all my docs ready to roll. Did you find it? I don't see it in here. I don't think it's been updated to here yet. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, hopefully we won't need it much longer. Although it's probably we will. So teams and sharing. I haven't played a lot in this. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit on this? Or are you better at this than I am, Veronica? On the teams? Yeah. Um because I have one any up. Well, one thing you need to know is you have to um it has to be within your office. So I can't share something. Yeah, with your branch office. So if I have a team member in Kierland, I can't share with them. It has to be within your branch. 
or within your office. So however you're set up, um, just know that. Um, and then you can share, um, I think it would be good for coaching. Like if I was coaching a couple of agents and I want to review what they've done before they go send it, then they could share that contract with me before they go send it out for clients to sign. I can review yep. it and say, good job, or won't you edit this mm -hmm. or help them out in that way. So yep. um, that I would say that is where I would, I think it would be a good use. Otherwise, if you're just an individual agent doing their own thing, you're not really going to be using it. Mm -mm. No, you are not. But it's good to know that you can. This was uh, something that we fought with really hard to get figured out um, via AAR to Transaction Desk. It's like, look, this is a big deal. This feature wasn't in there um, or it was buried in there somewhere, but it's it's gotten much easier because um, a lot of people do do work together. Mm -hmm. so we have the template. Whee! So for these guys, so I am going to get out of this template and take a listing in the condos. Everybody good with that? Awesome. So I'm just going to leave the transaction template and go into opening up a transaction. I'm going to take a listing. Now, these are ones I've done before. If you haven't done one, this will look empty to you. And that's just a second. Okay, it's like in everything else, I'm taking a new transaction. I'm going to go list uh, someone across the complex from me. And, and do you, before, um, I don't mean to interrupt, but do you want to show them in case oh, your screen looks different? You want to do branding, didn't uh, you? Well, no, the, um, if you just click on that gallery view versus the list view so they can, because I don't know if everybody's screen looks like a oh. list. So that little square That's up there, cute. maybe they prefer that. It's just a preference. It's just how you're yeah. viewing your your dashboard, basically. So yep. if that's all it is. So if yours looks like this, this is how you change it back to the list or to a gallery view. That's all it is. Yep, it's, it's, just, a, it's just a thing for your personal self. And then the filter is, you know, two years from now when you've taken, oh yeah, <laughs> thing, um, this is the way for you to sort I don't know how many were in my condo complex, how many were in surprise, or you know, you can sort them differently if you want to know. It's a way to track your business, basically. Mm -hmm. And this, this is with the 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 order. It's another sort function. Basket you wouldn't use unless you were adding something. Mm -hmm. So so we're gonna add a transaction for um so Veronica lives in this complex with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, she does. And I'm gonna sell her. Huh? I was gonna say your cat bothers my dog, man. Yeah, well, get over it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, your dog bothers my cat. <laughs> um, so I personally, so in basic transaction desk training, we go back and we say, it's how you did it before. However you labeled your transactions before, do it now. Some people used addresses, some people used client names. It's up to you. Um, I always personally used my client's last name. And then I would go from there if I had um, multiple clients, if I had a, like if I did a bunch of deals for Veronica, I would say, you know, Veronica dash something. That's just how I did it. So I would personally, I would call this Hannah. Oh, look at that. I think before. Obviously I did this before <laughs> because it popped up. I'm just gonna call it Hannah. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. Okay, so I called Veronica, I called it Hannah. I didn't add in anything else because I hit um, I hit the enter button, which is fine. Um, I can fix it later. So she's my she's my gal. Normally I would have picked this transaction type when I was just entering her and I, I didn't. So she is a residential listing. She lives, we're just gonna use my address because we can. Fullbrook, I did not come up, oops. Street, oh, sorry, my bad. Street number, separate from street name. Now y'all know where I live. Unit number 32. Okay, 
So basically it's subdivision and ABC condo. So at this point, if you wanted to add the template though, like let's say you're putting all the stuff in, you can still do that's that. Good. And that's what's nice is you could have already started something when, oh yeah, I didn't add the template. You can do that. It's not too late. No, it comes up in your, I think it comes up in your next step, doesn't it? It's actually those three dots at the top. If you click on oh, that, right. it says apply template. That's right, my bad. So you could, you can do it. If you don't do it right now, you can do it later. Um, then yep. you'll see that too, but you can also do it right now. I'm sorry, the snowman, it was right. I call him the snowman. Oh, sorry, <laughs> snowman. Traffic <laughs> light or whatever you wanna call it. You can add that right now, which is totally fine. So let's, or remember I said, any point in time, you can create a template. Mm -hmm. You can, you could create one, say you're working on this, this transaction and you want to create a brand new template. You can do that. We'll click the apply template puppy. And remember we did ABC condos. Okay. There's a question, um, Tammy, you asked, where would you enter the directional north, south, east, west for the address? it would actually go within the street name is where it would go. Um, you could always correct it. Do you see how when she did that up at the top, it's changing where it says address are right at the very top underneath the, the name Hannah. As, as she's typing change, it changes, change. here, it changes up here. Yeah. So, so I'm now you can see. Mm -hmm. So it as I change it here, it changes up here. Yep. And you know how we have addresses that are very strange here. Um, well, in other states, you might have one that would be like, you know, I think it's Washington where it's like S E something, something. It's like a, it's not normal yeah. with your numbers first. Right. So we mostly here in Arizona, sure. we're going to have street number, direction and name of street. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty, pretty easy. And I mean, but it's cool because as I, you know, it's the change of, so this is your, your title, not your title, but your address of that transaction just knows it. And as you change it in the data forms, it changes it up here, which is awesome. Um, so let's see. Right. Okay, MLS number. I haven't entered in the MLS. I'm just taking the listing, so I don't know. Um, it was built in 1950. I was talking with Veronica before we got on, and if you've done any of this, you know that you can just like in um, MLS Connect with zip forms, you can import from MLS. Now, you should never do that when you're taking a listing, unless you are relisting something you had listed not a terribly long time ago. Um, I'm never gonna recommend, like let's say somebody from Coldwell Banker had Veronica's listing before me. I will recommend you do not import her listing into yours because you, you put yours in organically. Um, it's just gonna take whatever data she put in, but unless you go back and you check every single box, make sure she did it correctly, you're the one responsible for what, what goes in to the to in here and on in the listing and if she did it in, if Ms. Coldwell Banker or Mr. Coldwell Banker had it incorrect it's going to go incorrect into yours um but again the only time what I would recommend you would import it is if you had if I had list, if I had listed Veronica's condo last year circumstances changed she decided not to sell it now she's doing it again so in that case I could import my old listing stuff into here so Holly had a question and I think I know what she's asking. She was saying, hey, I had one in 2018 and then again in 2020. Um, you're asking if it's the same broker. Even if it's not the same broker, you could import. You can't, mm -hmm. but as Susan was just saying, you can do it, but you really need to go through every single field because let's say you forgot to update the HOA amount and you're now is listed and active and back Two years ago the hoa was at 25 dollars a month okay now there was some kind of improvement and they've upped it to 225 
you you are in, you are in charge of that data so just make sure you are looking at all the data so yes you can and you cannot import pictures yeah like never can use, use someone else's pictures um yeah it's just that it's that there's a convenience factor so from a buyer standpoint if you were writing a, a an offer on something yeah we always recommend you import it but at the same time it's usually going to be another broker's listing that you're going to import into your purchase contract and you've got to make sure everything's right. Um, but there's just not not very many uh, circumstances where you would um, do that taking a listing. And if you do take import a listing, let's say, there could be some confusion because it's importing the other listing broker's information into contacts. So now you have to go into your contacts and delete them out. Mm -hmm. um, so be aware that you really need to scrub any information right. you bring in. So I um, I went and hit the next button and went to the to the into step two right here. Just like anything, there's a wizard you can opt to use or not, which is your wizard is over here. Um, I always use it because it keeps my choices. Whoops. Uh, super easy to get to. You can use this or not. Um, the way Veronica and I were talking earlier about setting transaction desk up to actually manage your business, you would want to put these dates in here. Um, if you're just going to use transaction desk just to kind of for your deals and you're going to track your business and your clients and all that elsewhere, don't do that. But you can get pretty detailed in this puppy. Obviously your list date, your expiration date, and you would update this as you go. So as your deal's going on out in the real world, you come in here every time something changes and you fill in these dates. And that way you would be tracking the entire thing in here. Um, I'm not gonna get into that right now, but completely doable. Contacts. So we talked about that. Um, did I add that template in there? I did, didn't I? Did I screw up? You didn't add it yet. I think you okay. went to show that you can do it, but you hadn't done it yet. My bad. And there was a question earlier and I answered privately, but now this would be appropriate because we're about to talk about contacts. And let me get back up there, Linda. Linda Cook, you said, can we go back to contacts for a second? Um, and you were asking about adding the, the contact at the time of the template. And I responded to you and said I wouldn't because unless it was an investor, you wouldn't want to have that contact inf information in here because this is a template. And now you are going to add you know, maybe you're dealing with this condo complex and you have three units, but they're all different owners. So you really wouldn't want to put a contact attached to a template if it's just a regular listing. Now, if it was an investor and you're going to use them over and over again, you know, they own 20 of them, maybe you would. So just to re, re go back to that question. Right. And exactly. And again, in this, this particular uh, pretend situation that we're doing, the only thing I can think of is maybe having your HOA contact in there. Um, and, and again, she wouldn't, he, she wouldn't go on any paperwork or anything. She's just part of this transaction. So she's, because you know you're going to need to get a hold of her. Um, and now you can add, so guys, remember one of the things that's, that's about navigating in Transaction Desk is wherever you're at here, navigate over here. If you want to go back and leave where you're at, you navigate over here. So even though there's contacts on this side and contacts on this side and there's, uh, you know, dashboard, all the things, some of the things over here are over here. If you, if you use this navigation, you're going to leave your transaction. You can get back. It's not a big deal. But to stay within this transaction that I'm working on this listing, I would navigate over here and it'll keep me in here. So that's that's a big deal. Now, right now, this button and this button would kind of do the same thing. Um, so if I download contact card. 
Oh, that's if I do it from a from a, a V card. Never mind. Uh, there are ways to bring in outside contacts. Um, you know how when you what is it called? There's a I always get messed up. Is it CVS or CSV or something like yeah. that? Yeah, comma separated value. Yes. Thank you, CSV. I think it's the drugstore CVS, whatever. So <laughs> when you. Um, if you wanted to take a database that you have elsewhere, I don't know, Outlook, a producer, I don't know, wherever you have your, your people, to get them in here, you turn it into a CSV and then bring it over here. And that's what it was talking about here is you can take a contact card from elsewhere and bring it in here. I have not personally messed with that, but if I wanted to add a contact, say my HOA person, like I said, to this deal, I could do it here. Add her, you know, just so that she's in here. She, again, she's not gonna be a signer or anything, but she's gonna be in here. But I do wanna add Veronica, right? So then I don't know if I have you in here. Let's see, let's find out. And Santina, hi, I answered your question, but I wanna bring it up as Susan's adding the contact. You can see her doing that. Um, Santina said, what if the listing was a lease and I'm taking the same uh, for now a sale and I'm using all the photos and it expired a few months ago. So it's going from, I leased it and now it expired and now I'm gonna put it up for sale. Of course, you can always use your own stuff. Um, Absolutely. We just, and it will import. So it's gonna import the lease information. So of course you just wanna update it, making it for the sale. So the appropriate information is now for the sale, but your photos, absolutely, you can do that. And even if your your photos, because her she also had a question about photos. Um, if your photos were from like 2005 and you wanted to use, maybe it's a really awesome front shot, um, you can absolutely still use that. You you could technically too. So let's say you were you were working with the same individual. We recommend, I'm gonna give you a little caution on this one. Um, you can use, so an agency, we all know that agency disclosures are pretty clean and cut and dry forms. Um, you can use the same agency disclosure, the same actual form, if it's all filled out for multiple deals. You just, you don't wanna to get too old. We, we say, you know, after three, six months, as long as you're still working with that client, you can keep using the same agency disclosure. If I haven't mm -hmm. worked with them for, and I still have the same agency disclosure, I need a new one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So, I mean, and there is no black and white rule on that. The rule basically is if you're still working with that client, it's okay to keep using it. After, you know, a few months, you do need to update it. But if there's a break in service, you need to get a new agency disclosure. Make sense? Um, one thing I wanted to talk about in contacts that and Veronica, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I got this right now. So if I leave Veronica like this, when she goes to sign stuff for me later, her signature is gonna come up VH and Veronica Hanna, and that's her email. So that's who she is, right? But, and that's how I have her as a contact because I use her for, I, I store her as Veronica because that's who she is, but what if, she holds all her properties in a trust or, or in an LLC, right? She's still Veronica, she's my contact. But if she holds them in Hannah LLC, then that's who's gonna come up the legal seller on the, uh, the, seller, the seller name in the ER or anything else for that matter it's gonna come up as Hannah LLC. If she wants to sign her name as Veronica Hannah um, Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> the second or um, signer for Hannah LLC. Maybe, maybe she wants to do that. Signer for Hannah yeah. LLC. Or signer for a trustee. That's the signature that's going to come up for her. It's not going to be just Veronica Hanna. It's going to come up as Veronica Hanna signer for Hanna LLC. 
And so that saves you messing around with that. It's how it's going to appear when you get into that whole e sign thing and when you get into the autofill of the docs. So when you're working with trusts, LLCs, this is super handy. Let's say there's, she's got six people in LLC. I can have all six contacts separate, but have different things down here than still Veronica and her brother or her daughter or whatever. All of them are listed separately as different contacts, but they're all part of this. For initials is the same thing. Maybe she wants, you know, to be, I don't know, Veronica, whatever your middle name is. It's Celeste. <laughs> Well, there we go then. There, y'all just figured that out. <laughs> cool middle name. So, and that's the initials that are going to come up. It's going to look like that when they come up in the little initial boxes. It's just if just it's handy. It's really handy when you're working with that. And then address, same as property address. What do you figure? Uh, they, why does it have unit number in here? I find that interesting. Interesting, interesting. Her phone number, fa fax number, okay. Whatever, I would put those in here and I could just save her. Okay, what page? So see, she's this, even though Veronica is my client, the seller is Veronica Han Hannah, I, I'm sorry, is Hannah LLC. Whenever you go to add a contact, it's gonna ask you if you want to add an existing one, just add contracts from Google. I will tell you right now, if you do that, you're going to have to sort through every Google con. So I use Google. I would not probably do that. I and mean, I have about a couple thousand Google contacts. I probably wouldn't do this. Um, I haven't messed around with this. Some of the, one of these days I will, and I'll import all my contacts from Google, and then I can really tell you how it works. But I don't know that much how it works. Well, I. Like that's a that's a good point is if you have all these Google contacts that you really don't want to be in here, I would mm -hmm. not do that because you might have a hundred clients that as you go, you're gonna start adding them in. And if you keep them in here, they'll be in here for next time they buy or sell from you. So I yep. wouldn't necessarily import um the system can be used kind of as a contact management program if you wanted, but I would stick to just think of it as you're typing up the forms to go get them signed and your contacts are in here, their information saved, but they could change their email in 10 years or five years or two years. So I wouldn't necessarily import myself. Right. It, it really gonna, it's gonna depend on how you decide you're gonna run your business. What software are you going to choose? Um, if you're gonna dive, full on into transaction desk, go for it. Um, my, you know, it, it could be done. If you're just gonna use this kind of for contracts and stuff, that's okay too, and maintain your whole life over here, your business life anyway, over in Wise Agent, you can do that. Uh, you can do it in Google, you can do it in Top Producer and all the other CRMs there are out there. I just, I, I hate people to see people do things twice. Um, and there's, this is a software that doesn't connect with other software. You can get stuff from other software into it, but there's always got to be that third middle piece. So we selected uh, Hannah LLC, Veronica slash Veronica as our seller. We have to add her to the transaction. So we got a selector. And we got, to, oops, that's not what I meant to do. We have to select her and add her into here. Where's my Okay, I've got um sorry, I'm trying to mess around with my my uh my camera. The stuff you guys can't see, the Veronica and I stuff, I'm over here messing with that. So that's, that's yeah. Funny enough. Um Go Eddie ahead. has a couple questions and I just I'm not sure if he's and I, I wrote him, so I want to know if he's it says what page can I start new name, add photo at top, previous and next. So I'm not sure where you're at, but if you're at the very beginning um, and you're in dash, the uh, you go to your home button on your left-hand side and then you'll pick a file. If you've already started one, 
you should be in there and you can import under details or dashboard or up at the top the three snow the three dots or the snowman i'm i'm not sure if that's where you're at um and then santina uh, so what, um santina had a, the question about the photos i think i now understand what she's asking so the photos don't get imported like when you're doing a listing that one photo it's just going to import the the one from MLS, but it's not going to create, we're not creating an MLS listing. So we're just creating the documents to go get signed for the new listing. So I think you're asking in MLS, if you do an incomplete and it's your listing, you can take those photos, but that's within MLS and that's not in here. So that's a separate place where you would import your photos. Um, okay. All right, so I chose um, Veronica, whoops, there you are, and then I clicked back to the dashboard so that it brought me in with her. You guys, guys, so we got, we, we added Veronica as my only contact because she's my seller. Um, I can add myself if I want to. Um, but because I'm the listing agent, I'm going to show up in everywhere that a listing agent needs to sign. So there's not really any reason to add myself because it's already going to recognize that I'm the listing agent. Um, I always ask that. I don't really understand why it says add yourself. Okay. Well, and, and uh, Linda asked another question, which she's going okay. back to, she's a, T, she's a TC and she, okay. um, want to know so in the very beginning when you first set this up when you mm -hmm. hit the home button and a new ad a pop-up window comes up and you put in the title you put type you can add an mls number at the bottom it says add me either listing agent selling agent or neither so if on your template you added yourself on that template mm -hmm. you're going to want to hit neither on the, that wizard because you're already inside that template now right. if you didn't add yourself into the template which i didn't then, then it's going to import anything from mls so if you're already on that listing it will import you so you could if you depending on how you're using this you could import and actually have yourself added twice so just go to contacts and if you see yourself in there it'll say a broker and it'll have an agent so, but if it's duplicated, you can delete one of those out. See, that's another question Brandy had regarding that same thing. Right. And it's because it was done at the very beginning when you set up that first pop-up window, Right. at the very bottom, it says neither listing agent or selling agent. And you want it, you have to know if you're already in your template or not. Right, and I'm, and I'm not, so I actually would have to add myself, I think. And we didn't import from a listing from a previous listing. So you're not, we're not in here. This is for so organically from scratch, never been listed in MLS, right? So you would have correct. to add yourself. And if I had added myself in my template, I'd be showing up, but I didn't. So I have to add me because I forgot. I, I took, had a little brain blank there. I forgot we were using the template. So I have to add myself because there are things I'm going to need to sign. Obviously, I'm taking a listing, web based paint. Who am I right now? I am a listing agent. There's my name, there's my email, my legal name, all that good stuff. Identifiers, that's interesting. Oh, look at that. I've never seen that before. So this adds me. So now I'm, yay. So it's gonna add me everywhere else. If again, if I when I had created the template, if I put myself in that template, I would already be in there. All right, we're going to go to step four. There's all the forms that I chose. Why are they in there twice? They do not know the question. That is very, very what is that? Oh, I know why. I the think we added the template twice. The template added it and the, uh, the wizard added it. My bad. That's because I, 
added the template after I added the wizard. So if this happens to you. And this is a good point. It will let you add up to four of the same forms in here. So you yep. could have four ERs in here. It's not going to say it's duplicated. It's duplicated. It will allow up to four of the same form to be added to a file. Um, there's different reasons for it. Um, most of you won't be using it in in that multiple ERs in the same file. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you have to be careful with these templates when you're adding them. You could accidentally do them twice. And that's okay. You can always delete it. Not a big deal. So if for all of a sudden I realized I wanted to, so remember that this transaction, whoops, pulled that template over. And that template is a separate little world, but so is the transaction. So it pulled the template over and put it in this transaction. Where we are right now is we are in the transaction. We're not in the template. We made the template, now we applied the template, but we're in the transaction. Anything we wanna do within the HANA that I labeled it listing, we messed with over here. Any, and anything we do over here only applies to this transaction. Everything we do over here is, I guess you could almost say global, the whole software. Does that make sense? So this is where, if you wanna stay within here, you stay over here. So contacts on this, this side is only the contacts that are for this transaction. Contacts on this side are all your contacts. See if you go like this, it's only gonna pull up the two that, that we have that are in the transaction world. If I click on this card, it's gonna pull up every contact I've ever used. So that's kind of a, a, a handy thing to remember. If I had documents, in this in this transaction, which I don't, they would show up here. Documents over here are in this box. So, and the same thing with forms. It's only the forms that I have in this transaction. The forms over here, if I clicked it, it would open my whole library of forms. So, I. Go. Going back, back to what we were just talking about, Debbie has another question, and I, I just want to make sure it's clear, okay. <laughs> which it's, there's two ways of doing it to add, she, her question is, do you add yourself as a listing agent or is it done automatically? Well, it depends. So if on your template, you didn't add yourself, which then in the, the very beginning, when you start a, a file and you hit home, add, a pop-up window comes up and inside that pop-up window, it will ask you, are you a listing agent, selling agent, or neither? There's just three options in there. So in this example, Susan's a listing agent. And so she wasn't added when we started this file, it, we hit enter. So we didn't get added. So we're adding now, Susan just added herself now. Um, and the, um, if you added yourself in the template, you would already be there. So then in that same pop-up window, you would have selected neither since you're already in there. And so it depends. Um, it, it, if you're on the template, so it will not automatically add you. Yeah, I was going to say, I can leave. I'm going to leave for a second. I will be back, don't worry, not me physically, but I'm going to leave the transaction and I'm going to go look at the template that we started and that we made earlier, which was ABC condos. That's the template we made. This has got nothing to do with Veronica's deal. I did not put myself in here as a contact. See, there's none in there. So I had to add it when I was in the transaction. I had to add myself to the transaction. If I wanted to, um, add myself here. So I would have to be, I would actually have to be listed in my contact list, which I'm not, I would have to be listed over here and I'm not anywhere in here. This is my main contact. These are 
all my contacts. So if I put myself in here, then when I went to choose in the, in the template, I could add myself, I could add Susan, but I'm not in there. <laughs> now, if I wanted to add myself as a new person, I could also do that and that's fine. You can do that, but I didn't add myself. So going back to the transaction that we were in, which is Hannah. Will you just go add, hit plus and not actually add one just so they can see the pop-up screen? So go back to home, to the, the home template? icon. No, to the home icon. To the template. No, as if we're gonna start a new file and just hit add so they can see the pop-up screen. When yep. you hit that add right now, that pop-up screen. This is the pop-up screen I'm referring to is you'll see name, template, type, and at the bottom it says add me as. Either if you hit neither, but the second you change that template to buyer or whatever, it changes that, those options there. So if you click on, just click on template and you click on listing, it will say, it will automatically change that to listing agent. So you mm -hmm. have to pay attention to those options. And yeah. that's where I'm saying. Because if I apply this, this, um, see, yeah, this see now, right now it, is. it yep. just changed to listing agent. So just be careful that you're paying attention to when you're first starting it, because I've had agents go and it did it. And I said, well, when you first went in there and they said, oh, I don't remember what I clicked on. <laughs> so just pay attention because it does change here. Yeah, it's the little details that that'll mess you up because it's so it's so intuitive and reads everything over here and here and that's frustrating. It is totally I get it. But yeah, it's so critical to know those little ins and outs and, that, and if you want to use it till its fullest, if you want everything to just kind of to load for you and it just to be super automatic. And it's like that with any software, to be honest with you, um, if you've really ever just stuck your head into big time. Um, Producer, I used to use it years ago. I mean, that thing is complicated. Um, if you get into it and you know all the little pieces, boy, it'll run like a river, it's smooth. Um, and this is the same way. It's it's a uh, it's that old uh, garbage in, garbage out. You know, if you put something in wrong, it's going to wind up down the road getting you. So if you're so, I opened. Uh, Hannah back up because that's the name of my transaction. And so I'm in Hannah and I want to navigate within Hannah. If I go over here, it's going to give me all my transactions. I open up Hannah and then I want to stay in there and I want to get back on my wizard. So I just hit wizard. It'll take me back where I was before. So that's how you navigate. If you leave, if you leave where you're at, you can easily get back where you're at, and then you want to navigate within, you navigate over here. It's a really cool thing. I like to describe it as on the right hand side, you're inside a file folder. The left yeah, hand yeah. side icons are your filing cabinet. Yep, so you just sense. pulled out the file. Now you're in that file and you've opened up, if you could imagine, a paper file. So file yep. on the right hand side options are you're inside a file left hand side icons you're in the filing cabinet with all the files yep yeah i mean it's the same way you organize files on your on your on your pc you know you you know how that works with you know how you do it and this if you do it a certain way but that is that is excellent every little thing this is this is the master and then this is this is the file absolutely and even within the file so within the transaction it has its own contacts. It has its own forms. It has its own documents, its own checklists, its own tasks. But you can create master lists of forms and master lists of documents and master lists of contacts over here so that you can move them into a particular transaction. It's, it's very weavy, <laughs> which makes it more complicated. So we've got our docs ready to roll. We could fill them out. We're not going to do that because you guys already know how to fill out a lead based paint and you know how to fill out these things. Like a normal. Uh, 
where are we? Oh, there are no documents. We didn't we didn't import any outside documents. So then we're done. I'm not gonna we're not gonna do design on this one. That one's e sign is for the a whole I would say, does anyone have any last questions that they have on the lit and this is specific? We're trying to keep this short and sweet and be concentrated on the listing side. Um right. It, there's other there's a lot of little details on this. We have another class that's going to go on the buy side, and then we're going to do another yep. class that's a little bit that's going to go all through it, and we'll do a signing through there. But this is just to kind of show you listing documents and listing template. Um, so if there's any other questions, let us know. And I'm going to give it a second here while she's checking to see. Just remember that this will give you your list of this is all your transactions, this is all your e-sign sessions, all your forms, these are all your documents, these are all your tasks, these are all your contacts. As soon as you're in a world of contacts, contacts are not one. Um, but as soon as you're in like a world of a signing session or a world of a transaction, if you, if you open one up, you navigate over here. And that's just helpful. Like when you when you wind up leaving, how to get back in and, and all that stuff. So it's helpful. And if you want to form templates, oops, how did that happen? Oh no, I just logged out. That's all right. Oops. <laughs> oops. Um, here. So I don't see any. Nope. Um, I just click on under questions. Is I believe we're all good. Okay. We have still over forty people who are listening and watching. I think maybe we just end it with showing them where to find some help. So if one of us aren't available, you can always go to yep. that question mark at that left hand side at the bottom. Here. They have a lot of tutorials in there. There's guides. There's, I mean, the whole. This is if you're. A reader. Yep. This you is see? if you're a reader, which is. Chat yeah. Button. You're, oh. And that live support and that email, they're very fast with emailing you right back. So I have used that myself yep. when I was learning. I'm like, what is this? They got this back to me. This is my favorite one. Yep. Personally. So a good place for help if you need help is right here. There's now, 47 videos just of transactions. Do you see? Yeah, those are the number of videos. <laughs> um, some and of these are short and sweet. Yeah. It's very short. Look at them all. It's crazy. If you and have a very question, specific, some of them are a person yeah. talking to you. Some of them are just music with words, but they're short and they're really, really specific. And you can use the search button, which is yes. even better. If you don't really know what you're looking for. I don't really know what I need. I need something to show me context. Yeah. How do you do all kinds of good stuff? But if you're having questions about logging in, that's not here. That is AAR. So mm -hmm. this is about within the system. So if you have questions that are more about logging in and that kind of thing, passwords, whatnot, that is an AAR question. So you would have to actually go to AAR and ask them, hey, I'm having trouble logging in um, because they, they have their passwords and can reset. This is just within transaction desk and more detailed guide of how to use it. Yep. So yeah, have some fun with that when you've got time on your hands, which I know none of us has have because we're all busy doing our jobs. Even though we're doing them from home, it's the same thing. Come back on Friday. Um, if Friday one it starts at ten though, so a little earlier. Um, and mm -hmm. we're gonna do a an offer. We're gonna make an offer. Um, so we're just gonna do. We're basically gonna do the same thing, but from a buy side. Yep. So you're going to get a, not a repeat, but maybe a little bit of clarification on, and we're just going to do it with a purchase contract. So, all right, guys. See Bye. You Friday, hopefully.
Bye. Bye.